So in this uh, session or this video, I'll be talking about um, the writing of consumer profiles or profiling a consumer. Um, so I've got an example there on the page. As you can see, um, I've got some sort of success criteria, which I'm going to go through now. OK, so consumer profiling, obviously, the consumer is the person who's going to be using our product or is going to be buying our product. OK, so it's very important that we get the product right for them, that we meet their needs. Um, and obviously, the consumer is likely to be part of a wider audience, a wider target market group. So it's quite a good idea to have a feel for who your target market is going to be. But perhaps using one consumer might be one way to get a, a feel for sort of uh, the general feel for that target market as you go through. So the first thing we're probably going to want to do is collect a range of information uh, about the consumer. So you can see here we've got a, a fairly generic list of uh, points. So we're asking for the, the consumer's sex, his age, and a series of things that he's interested in uh, down there. OK, now, when you're creating a, a, a consumer profile, I'd say some of the key things to um, identify are the demographic. So this is the, the age. Uh, range that he is, uh, perhaps race, gender, income, marital status, educational background, occupation, all these sorts of things that kind of take make up their demographic of that consumer or that, that target market that you're, you're basing it at. Uh, geo demographics, which, you know, in a, in a similar sense uh, about where, who he is, but, or who she is in, in some cases, but where they are a particular place, uh, perhaps in, in the country. So you might live in London, you might live somewhere else, but also the, the sort of breakdown of uh, the, the type of uh, family. And you can get an idea, of, presumably from this, of uh, their, their uh, structure, their family life and things like this. OK. Um, we also might to get, get an idea of their household environment. So things like the size of the house that they live in, the type of stru structure, the family type, whether it's perhaps an extent extended family or they're cohabiting you might want to work out who's the head of the household whether it's you know a, a parent or a, a guardian figure or someone like this can give us an idea of the, the household we can think about psychographics so this is personality their interests their lifestyle what they value and uh, see as important in their life um, hobbies and favorite sports types of restaurants they go to and you can see the type of information uh, here is kind of surrounding that sort of thing their their favorite music and their the magazines they read and the books they're interested in stuff like this now further to this we can also think about their behaviors so um, this is particularly in terms of how they uh, choose products and services um, and you know what, what are they interested in and so are they more interested in the service in a product are they more interested in price promotions how does this affect them and link to that obviously their attitudes as well so how do they feel about products and services do they uh, you know think very rationally when they purchase things or are they more led by emotion so this might allow you to design your product um, more based on a, a sort of a very modern sort of functional styling or if we're working on more of an emotive type uh, postmodern designs if people put the, the emotions importantly. So we're going to collect lots of information about the consumer and this helps us to develop a nice big picture about them. Okay, You can see what the uh, the student's done here. He's also selected some images that, you know, the, the consumer feels strongly about or perhaps, uh, you know, uh, it's the, the sort of things they're interested in and things that relates to the, the um uh, the information they've collected. Okay. Now, in addition to the the other sort of information that we can collect from our consumer on on the page here is their anthropometric data. Now, this can be quite uh, important, specifically if we're designing for one particular consumer. So, if we're we're designing for this person here, um, you know, uh, we're producing a, a product. We want to make sure that the product is ergonomic, so it fits them. It's it's safe for them to use. It's easy for them to use, and it's comfortable. Okay, the sort of general cri criteria for ergonomic products. We want to get their their sort of human measurements, their anthropometric measurements, so we make the products to fit them um, and to fit them well. Okay, so we've collected a range of different information here. Okay, and the important bit I would say is the, your analysis of the information, which is basically how you're going to use this. Because I see a lot of students um, collecting research, whether it's consumer profiles, product analysis, questionnaires, whatever it is they're doing. OK, and they collect lots of inf information. And then we when we get to the design brief and we get to write in the specification, there is no reference to this this information. And what you're doing when you're creating your design brief or your specification is you are you are basically making it um, making your case for your product that you're you're designing. OK, so you've basically got to sell it um, as something that is, that's worthwhile and it's, it's for a particular purpose. And the way we can do that is to back it up by research. So this analysis is very, very important and basically by collecting 
collecting all of this information, the demographic, geodemographics, household, psychographic, behaviours and attitudes, we can build a very big picture about who this consumer is and what they're interested in. So hopefully we can make um, a, a product to suit their needs or their tastes or their desires. OK, so this is how we would uh, start going about um, consumer profiling or profiling the consumer and further from this if we wanted further information from a consumer we'd probably develop questionnaires which I'll, I'll probably talk about in another video um, but you know consumer feedback throughout the project should be an ongoing process because it will help inform your evaluation and modifications to your product.